yard run by Tim Worley as Georgia beat the Gators final score 24 to 3 and the Bulldogs come into today's confrontation in Athens with a mark of 7 1 and 1 but their hands will be full as are the hands of any of Auburn's opponents because of that man Bo Jackson number 34 who has rushed for 1523 yards in nine games this season but he's been bothered by a deep thigh bruise still a very important game for Jackson individually today it may determine whether or not he wins the Heisman Trophy great rivalry out of the south coming your way today ABC Sports presents CFA football from Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. The Auburn Tigers against the Georgia Bulldogs. And with a temperature near 80 degrees, 82,000. Looking on, sold out Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. Auburn taking on the Georgia Bulldogs. And we can first update you a big game in the SEC. Tennessee has defeated Mississippi. Thus, the Volunteers still control their own destiny. For them to go to the Sugar Bowl, they'd have to win their next two games. As you see the conference standings, Florida was the winner over Kentucky today, but they are ineligible for the conference championship. Tennessee is 3-1. and one. There is Georgia, still an outside shot at the Sugar Bowl, but they need some help. Tennessee would have to lose, and of course, Georgia would have to win. And there is Auburn with a mark of 2-2 two and 7-2 two and seven and two overall. I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to Athens. This should be quite a ball game. As far as the two teams are concerned, they really knew he had a good team at the beginning of the season. But recall on opening night, it looked as if they had pulled out a miracle victory on the block putt. Then Mike Shula led Alabama down the field. That's the only game Georgia's lost this season. And that loss might very well keep them out of the Sugar Bowl. As far as Auburn is concerned, a lot of people thought they'd be number one. They were going for a national championship. So if you think seven and two is disappointing, well, in a way it is when you're seeking a national championship, but a lot of coaches would like to live with a mark of 7-2, and two, and that is Pat Dye's record as he brings his Tigers into Athens. Now, last week, Georgia with a big win over then number one ranked Florida, won it by a score of 24-3. Here's Vince Dooley talking about the residual effect today. Well, there's no doubt that it's put uh, added life to a football team, uh, but uh, we do have a very difficult assignment, and traditionally we have this assignment, and that is to play... Uh, two great teams and great programs and great rivals back to back. Uh, that is to come off of the Florida win, which, which is a big win, and then have to play a team uh, like Auburn, a great rival like Auburn. We're sort of the Florida this week. Florida had the same problem last week after their great win over Auburn having to play us. So it is very difficult, but there's no question that it's uh, given us new life, new hope uh, for the possibilities of a championship. And here come the Auburn Tigers, who bust in yesterday. A 2-2 two two mark with conference losses to Tennessee and then Florida in 7-2 overall. They are seeking a spot in the top 10. They still have a chance at that. And also, they do figure to be going to a bowl, though it does not look like it will be the Sugar Bowl by any stretch of the imagination. And the Georgia Bulldogs are ready to make their entry. 3-1-1, one, one, the conference mark. The loss, as we mentioned, at the hands of Alabama. The tie, surprisingly, with Vanderbilt as the Bulldogs get ready to make their entrance before this raucous crowd of 82,000. the Tigers. I'm joined now by Lee Grosscup. Everybody knows Bo Jackson is in ball game today for Auburn. Everybody knows Bo Jackson is still in quest of the Heisman Trophy. But what about his condition? Bo Jackson spent most of this week in the training room rehabilitating a deep thigh bruise. He practiced finally for about 15 minutes yesterday and uh, apparently he feels pretty good. Historically, we have seen him play with pain and he has had some of his best games in big games like this. Even with a healthy Bo Jackson and with good ground attacks on both sides, 
Do you sort of get some little suspicion that the quarterbacks may make the difference today? I had that feeling early in the week, and it was confirmed by both coaches. Pat Dye feels that Pat Washington right now is throwing the ball about as well as he has ever seen him throw the football, and he wants him to put it up more than usual to test a, uh, a problem secondary for Georgia. So look for him to throw maybe 20 to 30 times. James Jackson, the same for Georgia. He's more of a scrambler, but he has a very strong arm. Now, Georgia is a slight favorite, two or three points, depending on the line, and most of that due to the fact they are playing between the hedges here at Sanford Stadium. So what does Auburn have to do to win the game? Well, for right now, I'm going to revert to some coaches' buzzwords. It's going to be balance and consistency on offense, pressure and containment on defense. Simple, but not easy. And fewer turnovers might help as well. Yeah. Georgia, Auburn, coming up from Athens when we come back. CFA College Football. This Series record, Georgia 41 victories, Auburn 40. Seven games have wound up as ties. It's been a terrific rivalry through the years. It began back in 1892. Pat Dye is a graduate of Georgia. And as most of you who follow this sport know, Vince Dooley is a graduate of Auburn. And here we go with Auburn set to receive the kickoff. It is a short kick that is angled toward the near side and is taken at the 20-yard line by Kyle Collins, and he is out of bounds right there. So Collins makes the catch as you look at Pat Washington. Bo Jackson starting a tailback. Then Tommy Agee is the fullback in front of Bo out of the I formation. The H-back is Ron Middleton. And Freddie Wagan, the wide receiver. Collins, I think, doing Georgia a bit of a favor by making the catch on a ball that was going to go out of bounds. And Georgia would have had to re-kick. It is Auburn's ball at the 20-yard line on first down. And it is the first man through, Tommy Agee, who picks up two. Second down and eight. Let's look at the line now. Jeff Park, 233-pounder, the tight end. Steve Wallace is outstanding, 6'6", 265 in East Atlanta. Jeff Lott is another good one out of Gainesville, Georgia. Ben Tamborello from Birmingham, the center. Jan Cowart at the other guard spot. And Stacey Searles, another fine one. It's a very good offensive front. Second down and seven with the ball at the 23-yard line. And Washington to put it up for the first time. It's hit as he throws. And the ball is caught by A.G. after the deflection. And A.G. gets all the way out to the 37-yard line. Calvin Ruff put the pressure on. Washington was hit as he threw the ball. It came loose, was deflected into the hands of A.G. number 30. Now, how's this for turning adversity to advantage? You can see Pat Washington setting up here. The ball bounces off number 66, his offensive lineman, into the hands of Tommy A.G., his fullback, Number 30. No, that was not a gadget play. So that was a little bit of luck. The same effect. On first down from the 37-yard line, carrying straight up the middle is Bo Jackson, his first carry, and we'll watch him very carefully and see if we can detect any slight limp, any sort of minor problem that still exists. We talked about the bruised thigh. He's been banged up this year, and that's part of the reason he has been relatively inconsistent of late, but today is a very key game for him, obviously, in his race for the Heisman as you look at Georgia's defensive unit, and that secondary is banged up and could be vulnerable. We'll find out. Second down and five. Jackson. Banged down at the 42-yard line. Billy Mitchell, the team's leading tackler, put the crunch on him. down and five at the 42 yard line brings up the first passing situation let's see if pat washington goes to the air as pat Dye mentioned during the week he would like him to do Trey Gaines is wide to the left washington looks that way then back over the middle and throws into traffic and it is caught at the 47 yard line then ruled incomplete jeff parks was there amidst 
a couple of bulldogs, and then on a late call by the official, he says no catch. Jeff Parks, number 82, is the tight end on the right. As Washington looks left, comes back to Parks, apparently, it looks apparently to be a catch, but John Brantley, who plays wall-to-wall -wall linebacker, number 42, really got a shot on him, dislodged the football, and it's ruled incomplete. Lewis Tolbert, one of the best in the country, averaging 45.1. To put it in the air, good high kick and a fair catch is called for at the 18-yard line by John Little. And that's where the Bulldogs will take over. They'll mark it at the 19 as Georgia stops Auburn on its first series. 44-yard punt, just shy of his average. And the Bulldogs take over at the 19-yard line. Spinover. And the two freshmen, Worley, along with him as the running backs. As you look at the offensive unit, Jackson, Worley, and his running mate, Henderson, both having big games last week in the Gator Bowl. Jimmy Hockaday, the wide receiver on one side, and Freddie Lane, the other. Loss of one, second down and 11. And that's Herman Archie in the game number 81. He goes in motion. Jackson rolling to his left, throwing against the grain, and nobody is there. The intended receiver was Archie, but the pass was well overthrown. Take a look now at the offensive line with Troy Sadowski, a freshman starting at tight end. Wilbur Strozier, 251. Stevens weighs 245. Anderson is their main man. They call him the bell cow, the center. Mac Burrows, the other guard, and the other tackle is Victor Perry at 272 pounds. Third down and 11 with Jackson from the 18-yard line, and it's clouding up on a warm day in Athens. Worley wrapped up back at the 14 by Gerald Williams, the 6'3", 270-pound senior, Stopping in behind the line of scrimmage, and so the Bulldogs not only don't pick up a first down, they don't gain anything. They go backwards on every play and are forced to punt from deep in their own territory. Back to kick is Chris Carpenter, averaging 42 yards a kick. Last week, he had a 64-yarder against the Gators. And Trey Gaines, number 19, the Auburn wide receiver, is back to receive the kick, standing in his own... 40-yard line. Good, high, and deep kick, and a fair catch is called for by Gaines, who backs up all the way to the 29-yard line. So Carpenter gets them out of a hole with a 57-yard kick, and the Tigers have the ball back with 11:01 to go in the quarter. Each team has had the ball once. Neither able to move. We played four minutes, and Auburn has it to start its second series at the 29-yard line. The fake to Jackson, and Washington throws, and it's dropped at the 30-yard line by Tommy Agee. Hardly mattered. Agee wasn't going anywhere anyway. Second and ten. As we predicted at the top of the show, Auburn throwing more passes than usual. Georgia has some problems in the secondary that uh, we will document for you. Georgia, when they had the football, managed to accumulate minus five yards in three plays, some indication of the tough defense being played by the Tigers. Second and 10 from the 29-yard line. And this time, Jackson carries. And Bo skirts his way through with a penalty marker going down out to the... 38-yard line, but Lawyer Tillman, number 85, the wide receiver, may have been in motion. We'll get the call. Illegal procedure. That is the indication. The referee today is Joe Hicks. He heads this Southeastern Conference crew, and that negates Jackson's would-be eight-yard pickup. That's illegal procedure. Motion against the offense. Look at that. Five-yard penalty. It's second down and 15 with a ball at the 24-yard line.
Tillman comes out wide to the left, and Gaines goes to the other side. And again, it is Jackson looking for room and bursting forward out to the 36-yard line. Black and Moss converge to make the tackle, and at least early on, Lee, it looks like no ill effect as far as that thigh is concerned. From a low angle, you get a sense of the size, the speed, the strength, the cutting ability of Bo Jackson. And when you look at him, you, it's hard to get a sense that he's 225 pounds, 6'2", 225, 4'2", speed in the 40-yard dash. That was a, a decathlon performer in high school. Great all-around athlete. On third and three, Washington keeping first down and a lot more into Bulldog territory and written down at the 33-yard line. John Little making the tackle. And that's the beauty of having Jackson trailing you on the option play. The defense has to think about the pick, and then Washington was able to turn it upfield himself. That's exactly what happened. And remember that Pat Washington was a wishbone quarterback last year. He's running the option this time out of the I formation. He picked up a good block from his fullback, Tommy Agee, number 30. And it was finally John Little in the secondary who brings him down. So to the 33-yard line, first and 10. And it's Jackson skirting a tackle in the backfield and taking it inside the 30-yard line where Harris and Mitchell converge on the stop. So Auburn moving steadily and quickly here in the first quarter with nine minutes and 27 seconds to play and no score. And meanwhile, Jackson is now going out and Brent Fullwood comes in. Fullwood spelling Jackson. So the tailback number 22, who had three touchdowns against East Carolina last week, on second down and seven from inside the 30. And it's Fullwood with a penalty flag thrown at the line of scrimmage, tackled back at the 32 by Bill Mitchell, who's been in on four tackles already, number 56. And it could be another procedure call, but we'll wait and see. Penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. And it's offside against Georgia. They had lined up offside. We suspect it was Henry Harris, number 52, who was the guilty party. And so instead of the loss with Fullwood carrying, Auburn becomes the beneficiary of this five-yard march-off. Defense, offside, five yards, second down. Still second down, and second down and two with A.G., the fullback, number 30, and Fullwood, the tailback, number 22. And it's A.G. stopped at the line of scrimmage on a play that was very slow in developing, and also, I think the negligible gain or minimal loss was caused by some mistiming. Mix up in the ball handling. I think they were trying to go with a handback trap, faking wide and then handing back to the fullback. The quarterback didn't get his steps right. So Washington was out of sync. No gain. Third down and two. If you're going to get out of sync, that's a pretty good time to do it on second and two. With a third tight end in motion again, flags go down. Yan Howard was the man who jumped number 53. So both teams having trouble getting timing down early on. And the procedure call will cost them five. That'll take it back to the 30-yard line and set up a third and seven. Well, the dead ball foul in Coastal by the offense. Third down. Third and seven for the Tigers at the Georgia 30-yard line. Washington protected well and incomplete, and he had a man wide open. Trey Gaines. And Jeff Park both in the area, and it was Park crossing the intended receiver covered by Little on the play. And Washington is now one out of four. 
go a 47-yard field goal attempt. Upcoming now for Chris Johnson, who is their long kicker. He's made two of three and his longest a 46-yarder against Florida. This one from 47. And the kick is wide to the right. So an impressive beginning, but a futile ending to that drive for Auburn. Georgia gets the ball back with 7.49 to go in the first quarter. G-E-O-R-G-I! I remember him well. Frankie Sinkwich won the Heisman Trophy in 1942. Fireball Frankie Sinkwich, he had a teammate, Charlie Trippy, who was also a great all-purpose player. 40s were some time for quarterbacks and running backs for the Bulldogs. And 43 years later, as we come back to live action, it is David McCluskey carrying straight up the middle. My favorite mascot, Ugga. <laughs> this is Ugga 4, if I'm not mistaken. Ugga 4. Ugga Roman numeral 4. Ugga 3 won a national championship yep. in 1980. Tough bark to follow. <laughs> Second and seven from the 33-yard line. Woo! Freddie Lane is in motion. And Jackson hands the ball off to Lawrence Tate, who scrambles out past the 40-yard line and has a first down. Vince Dooley likes to use four running backs. Worley and Henderson started, and now McCluskey and Tate are in there. This is Tate. From this low angle, you get a sense of the speed and power of Lars Tate. They have big, fast backs. There isn't a Herschel Walker here, but there are some outstanding runners as he follows in behind Anderson and Burroughs, number 69. First and 10, Bulldogs from the 41-yard line. It's a scoreless first quarter to this point. That's Sadowski setting up on the right side. They make that the strong side, and McCluskey is stopped after a pickup of a couple. Dave McCluskey, a junior from Rome, Georgia, and let's check in with Al Crowdwick on the sideline. Al, I'm trying to get some insight into something Georgia calls the hydrant pattern, and I've just got, got just the tools to do it. With me, of course, is the man you just saw, Ugga Four. Ugga, how do you feel about that? How's this game going to go? Yeah. Well, how about this dog, Al? Well, that was a fumble by Ugga, but we'll give him another shot later on. Second down and seven as Lane takes it on the reverse to the 45, to the 50, and stops at the 40-yard line, a first down. Freddie Lane stopped by Pat Thomas. He ran two reverses in a 17-14 win over Baylor, one for a touchdown. The flow goes left, but the reverse to Lane comes back to the right. The picket fence is well set up, and Lane, who is becoming the best all-purpose runner on the team, gets a good block from Strozier before Thomas, number 41, brings him down after a 16-yard gain. First and 10, Georgia. At the 40-yard line, 5.43 to go in the quarter. Again, it's Sadowski setting up as the tight end on the right side. The play goes that way, but not very far, as McCluskey is wrapped up by Harold Holman out of the middle, number 94. Holman, one of the smaller players on the team, 5'11", but a blocky 234. Small, but very, very strong. Hallman, Williams, and Rocker pretty much interchangeable there along the front wall. That is considered the strength of the Auburn defense. Second and 11 from the 41-yard line. Pitch it back to Tate. Some room through the middle as he gets to the 34-yard line. McCluskey leading the way for Lars Tate, number 32. Hunker down, you hairy dog. Let the big dog eat what they used to say when Herschel Walker was playing tailback. He gobbled up quite a few yards. They may not have a big dog, but they got some pretty good-looking pups, including those two freshmen. Working out of the backfield. On third down and three from the 33-yard line. Tate, behind McCluskey, cuts back inside, but is stopped at the 33-yard line by Pat Thomas, number 41 who is starting in place of Edward Phillips at that linebacker spot. Phillips out with a bruised kidney. Coleman, Williams, Rocker, the interior line for Auburn, have been dominating defensively. This time leading the way. Pat Thomas actually winds up making the tackle. So on fourth down now, Georgia with a field goal attempt upcoming. Steve Frumley, a freshman, 
whose longest this year is 46 yards. This a 51-yard attempt from the 41-yard line. It is long enough, but it is wide. Wide to the right. So two long field goals missed, one by each side after two drives that started in promising fashion. But they both come up empty, and we're still scoreless with 3.48 to play. Let's go, Georgia! <laughs> yeah. Lynn Swan tried to do that last year. We almost lost it. That's right. Well, Troutwig is on his way over to that War Eagle, if that War Eagle is here. Tracy Rocker, number 74, the freshman lineman out of Atlanta, Georgia, taken up on the sidelines as Auburn is at the 34-yard line. Jackson is back in the game, and Bo takes it out to the 36-yard line where Jake Richardson, number 99, makes the tackle. Run some scores in for you. Michigan a winner, 48-7 over Minnesota. Boston College takes care of Syracuse. The Mountaineers are a 13-point winner over Temple. Florida squeaking by Kentucky after that loss last week. Florida comes back to win, but only by two, and we told you about Tennessee and Mississippi earlier. On second and eight, it is Jackson, but he goes nowhere as Bo is stopped to the 34-yard line. Henry Williams smells that one out, number 90. Nice play by that sophomore whose hometown right here. <laughs> That's the best place to stop Bo Jackson before he crosses the line of scrimmage because when he gets up steam, he has a lot of tools. 4-2 speed. His world-class sprinter speed despite the fact that he weighs 225 pounds. 240 to go. First quarter, no score. Third down, nine from the 34-yard line. Washington has it not down. In fact, might have thrown it into the back of one of his own men. Kenny Sims, number 57, breaking up the play. So Washington has thrown a couple of balls that have been deflected at the line of scrimmage. The other wound up as a completion. And Auburn to kick. Lewis Colbert, who kicks with a club foot, and despite what would be considered a handicap by many, a 45.1 average as he is up among the nation's leaders in that department. And John Little is the deep man for Georgia standing back to the 23-yard line. Good, high, deep kick again. This one's a beauty. And they let it bounce. And Auburn will try to down it. And it takes a great Auburn bounce and is dead at the two-yard line. Gary Kelly covers it. A tremendous kick by Colbert. The gamble was made by Little as he signaled for the fair catch, then let it bounce, hoping it would go into the end zone. It turned out to be a 64-yard punt. Next week, 3 Eastern time, the Big Eight confrontation, the much-anticipated one, Nebraska, Oklahoma. That's our CFA presentation for you a week from today. Corrected score, Syracuse beats Boston College, not the other way around. Syracuse 41, BC 21. Georgia at the two-yard line, first and ten. And Jackson seeks some breathing space and gets out to the five-yard line. Two minutes to go in the period. Georgia Tech still in the hunt in the ACC. Beats Wake Forest in Atlanta today handily. Virginia knocks off North Carolina by two. Appalachian State over Marshall by a score of 40 to nothing. Henderson and Worley are the running backs, the two freshmen. Worley, 38, is a tailback, and it was a marker down before the inception of the play. Again, Joe Hicks heading the crew here. Tulsa beats East Carolina by three touchdowns. SMU had their hands full today, but the Mustangs prevail over Texas Tech as the penalty goes against Georgia. Head ball foul. Offense moving. After the penalty, half the distance to the end zone. It is second down and nine. The Auburn cheering section. The Auburn fans seated right behind Georgia right now. Might have been instrumental in somebody not hearing the count. 
On second and nine, missed timing again in the backfield, but it does no damage. Keith Henderson takes the ball out to the eight-yard line. Jackson bumping into Henderson. That's the type of play that oftentimes results in a fumble, but this time he's able to bring it out to the eight. He was a little slow with his reverse pivot. And he almost put it on his hip instead of in his belly. Henderson, of course, the man who broke the long one last week in the game against Florida. 76-yard touchdown followed by a 32-yard touchdown. Third and three. And it's Worley carrying out to the 13-yard line, and we'll see where they spot it. It appears to me as if he has the first down. Then McCurdy in on the tackle, and he does. It's a first down for Georgia. Let's check in with the crowd again, Al. Al, it's the last time I listened to Jim Lampley. I'm going to try and feed the War Eagle, who's the fifth one. Not interested in eating a dog biscuit yet. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> It's a, good, it's a good thing we don't do teams with nicknames of octopi or giant squid or something. Troutwick would go everywhere. First down from the 13-yard line. Jackson hands the ball off to Henderson out to the 16-yard line for a gain of three. By the way, that eagle is a tiger. That's his name. Trying to keep our mascot straight up here today. Meanwhile, there's another penalty flag thrown. But War Eagle is not a mascot. That is a cry. Tigers are the official mascot. Delay a game call against Georgia. A lot of ticky-tacky penalties here in the first period. Nothing major. A lot of five-yard march off for delay and offside illegal motion. Right now it is first and 15 from the eight-yard line. And it's Keith Henderson, who comes out of Cartersville, Georgia, carrying for a couple, and that could be the final play of the first period. Well, as we figured, it would be a fast game, a running game, and tough defense would be featured. Battle of the trenches. That's what it's been, and Georgia breaks the huddle, but they do not figure to have the time to get the play off, and in fact, they do not, so that is the end of the first period. Each team mounted a drive that started promisingly but ended with long missed field goal attempts. And so with 15 minutes gone in this great traditional battle in Athens, Auburn, and Georgia are scoreless. So the second quarter is about to start in Athens, Georgia. Al Michaels with Lee Gross Cup and Al Troutwig at Sanford Stadium. Vince Dooley in his 22nd season here in Athens. Watching his team with the ball, second down and 12 from the 10-yard line. And Jackson, after the play fake, back to throw. And it's fumbled, fumbled at the 32-yard line, recovered by Auburn. After the completion to Cassius Osborne. Russ Carriker comes up with a football, number 47. Print out left by the quarterback, Jackson, and he's looking for Osborne, number 24, who's running a middle route. Ball is caught successfully. Great hit by Jimmy Warren, number 45. Dislodges the football. It's three, and along comes Russ Carriker, number 47. Gives a very opportune field position. First down for the Tigers at the Georgia 33-yard line. It's Fullwood, the tailback, unable to turn the corner and wrapped up at the 33-yard line, led by Steve Boswell, the defensive charge, number 44, who missed the first three games this year with injuries. He's a junior from Warner Robins, Georgia. So as we said at the top, turnovers certainly would be one of the keys today. And statistics have proven out that when you get the ball in this kind of field position, you should score 65% of the time. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Forward again, and not much cooking in the middle, and it's Boswell, who's been like a magnet on the last two plays, number 44, making the tackle. Brent Fullwood is a junior from St. Cloud, Florida, so as Pat Dye looks on, he knows that next year when Jackson is gone, it'll be Fullwood who will be picking up the burden, and he is a good one. 
question is, will they stay with the I formation or go back to the bone? They ran the wishbone the first three years that Bo was in. Auburn. Third down. Nine. Washington fakes the forward and then throws deep and it's juggled and at the 13-yard line, incomplete. Freddie Wagan nearly came up with the ball after the juggling act with John Little covered on the play and it's incomplete. Deep drop by Washington and he's looking for Wagan number 14 on a, a crossing pattern. Ball juggled twice. Look momentarily like he may have caught the ball, but I think you're going to see it touch the ground. There's the juggle. There's the second juggle. He never had possession. Now, good call. Chris Johnson to attempt a 50-yard field goal. He was wide from 51. And this one is good. Just long enough. And he gets it over. So he missed from 51 and hit from 50 and Auburn takes advantage of the turnover after the fumble recovery they lead 3 nothing. all yours Jim not only that Chuck Long may wind up with a Heisman trophy as well that's a good point and we'll get into that as this one continues on in terms of the Heisman situation and Bo Jackson and Chuck Long and Robbie Bosco and right now Long may have the inside track as well as Iowa. Down to the kickoff with Auburn on top, 3-0. A good deep kick, so deep in fact it goes through the end zone. And out to the 20, come the Georgia Bulldogs. Jackson led in that race, but Long has been gaining ground. And Long had that one bad outing on national television. They thought he was over and done with as far as the Heisman was concerned, but uh-uh. Meanwhile, Monday night, we can tell you, a good one. The New York Giants on top, along with Dallas and the NFC East, to take on the Washington Redskins. Our presentation on Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern time. That rivalry dates back to 1932, and I can tell you there's some tradition in that one. Meanwhile, we had another penalty flag go down. Offside on the kickoff. Five-yard penalty will kick off. An offside call, another one, against Auburn. And so we'll find out if that affects Johnson again, who booted that one all the way through the end zone and has just kicked the 50-yard field goal for the game's first point. Well, you've heard that statistics can be misleading, but I think these stats are rather indicative of what kind of game it's been. If you look at the total yard, 69 for Auburn, 47 for Georgia, no turnovers. And time of possession virtually equal. That kind of game. We thought it would be. Bulldogs came in slightly favored. Auburn has a 3 0 lead. By the way, the official count, a 49 yard field goal, is what Johnson is credited with. The ball just shy of the yard strike of 40. And another flag goes down, this time because the kick is out of bounds. funny the the fates and fortunes of a field goal kicker and the kickoff man a guy who just kicked a 49 yard field goal then boots one on the fly through the end zone <laughs> kicks the next one out of bounds at the 25 yard line when he has all that time no one's rushing him kick it team was offside on the kickoff five yard penalty and we'll kick over offside as well the flag went down for the kick going out of bounds, but now we're being told offside as well on the kickoff, so it wouldn't have mattered had he booted it through again. Crazy penalty to see twice in a row in your 10th game of the year. Back to the 30. And Johnson to kick it lane number four was back deep along with Tron Jackson. And Johnson this time at the line drive to Hopper fielded at the eight yard line by Jackson. Up past the 25 out to the 33 yard line goes Tron Jackson and that's where the Bulldogs will begin this drive. Get the top 10 in for you now. Penn State has drawn first blood against Notre Dame. Seven to nothing there. Nebraska rolling over Kansas, 40 to three. We told you about Wisconsin and Ohio State, and that's shocker. 
Air Force in the third period, leading BYU by eight. From the 33-yard line with Jackson at quarterback, James on a roll to his left, throwing off balance and out of bounds. Lane made the catch, but he couldn't come down inbound, so it'll be second down and 10 from the 33. In college football, the rule states that one foot must be inbound. Well, he is clearly out of bounds there. No problem with a zebra there. Iowa fifth rank leading Purdue 21 17 in the second Oklahoma over Colorado 14 to nothing that game in the third quarter second and 10 Bulldogs from the 33 yard line Auburn ahead three nothing Jackson protected well fires over the middle complete into Auburn territory to Jimmy Hockaday He's to the 40-yard line, fumbled the ball, but he hit the ground first. Jimmy Hockaday, number 85. This is the type of play that James Jackson needs. He needs something like this to boost his confidence as Hockaday runs a deep middle cut in front of Kevin Porter, number three. Races toward the sideline, and Porter and Johnson finally bring him down. There was talk that Jackson might be replaced by Wayne Johnson early on. First and 10 from the 40-yard line after a 28-yard game. And Jackson gets ripped at the line of scrimmage. Gary Kelly, number 42, hogtied him. From this low angle, you really get a sense of what it's like down in the trenches. As Jerry Kelly, number 42, made a key play earlier on a punt, really gets a shot on the ball carrier. Second down and 10 from the 39-yard line. Sadowski sets up on the left side, and they roll the other way. And Jackson throws, and wide open, it's Herman Archie, and out of bounds he goes at the 25-yard line. and 10 at the 25. Tate. 4-5 to the 20-yard line. Stopped by Arthur Johnson. Dooley likes to alternate his running backs. He has Worley and Henderson working as a pair and Tate and McCluskey, who are in there now working in tandem. And Jackson has the hot hand right now. He was one of three for 23 yards moments ago. Now he is three for five for 65 yards. Second and five. 11-15 to go in the half. Auburn leading 3-0. And on second and five, it's McCluskey fighting his way close to a first down. David McCluskey, a junior from Rome, Georgia. Moved to fullback last year. He was a tailback his first season here. Good blocking back. In addition to doing a pretty decent job when he has the football. He is shy of the first down by inches. His third down, less than one, outside the 15-yard line. With the power eye now. And the fullback carrying for the first down. Keith Henderson. The third back inserted to go along with Tate and McCluskey. So a first down at the 13-yard line. Keith Henderson, who was an All-American tailback in high school, recruited as a tailback, has made the adjustment and moved to fullback with a great deal of efficiency. From the 14-yard line, Jackson, nice take. Keith gets to the five-yard line and all kinds of flags, and that would indicate a face pass call.
from this angle, it's going to be very clear that there is a face mask infraction. And what I like what Jackson does here is that he sees when he's going to keep the ball, he protects it. He puts that extra hand in there. There's the face mask right there. Clearly by number nine of Auburn, and that's Powell, the free safety. He was close to a first anyway, and they go halfway to the goal line from the spot of the infraction to put it at the two, and it's first and goal. Again, out of the power eye. With Worley in there as the tailback, it's Worley taking it and not getting in. He is stopped inside the two-yard line. Tim Worley run out of bounds that time by Tracy Rocker, number 74. In fact, he was shot outside the two-yard line. They spot the ball just inside the three. Under 10 minutes to go in the half. Auburn leading 3-0, but Florida, but Georgia rather, knocking at the door on second down and goal. Jackson keeping. Touchdown, Bulldogs. is the hero of this drive so it's fitting that he should take it into the end zone on part two of the option play he saw daylight got a good block from McCluskey number 43 and outran Thomas to the end zone extra point by Steve Crumbly is perfect and with 951 to go in the half a drive that started with pretty decent field position after the penalties had negated that kick through the end zone by Auburn. The dogs march down the field and take the lead. Well, that's turned out to be a beauty, and it figured to be in maybe the most important game in the history of the Western Athletic Conference. And a game not being seen by too many people, but it's turned out to be a gem. Here is 7-3, to three, Georgia on top. Ball fielded at the four-yard line by Kyle Collins, and he brings it back to the 11. Run out of bounds by Aaron Chubb, and so the Auburn Tigers will begin their drive deep in their own territory. It was hard to imagine that game not being a barn burner. Air Force BYU. I said not being seen by too many people in light of the fact that uh, it's not on network television, and it was picked up by... Kirk Gowdy Productions, the great Cowboys, televising into certain markets today in that area as Jackson takes it out past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Bo picking up six, and John Brantley makes the stop. George's scoring drive right there, commencing at the 32-yard line. James Jackson, the obvious hero of that drive, but maybe the un unsung hero would be David McCluskey, the fullback, number 43, who had two key blocks on the drive. Second down and four from the 22-yard line. Jackson again. Out to the 26, where Brantley makes the tackle. And Bo is close to a first down. We know it's Bosco coming on in that game, and we were talking about Long and Jackson before. Those are the three men, as Bo picks up the first down, who would be the Heisman favorite. And it is going to be a very interesting little tussle here to determine who wins the Heisman Trophy. First down from the 27. Washington pitching back to Jackson. And he is popped by Tony Flack out at the 30-yard line after a gain of three. Contrast to last year, Lee, and, and as much as everybody conceded the Heisman to Doug Flutie, it was a foregone conclusion, and Doug picked it up. But this year, it's a, it's a scramble. He becoming the first quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy since Pat Sullivan, Auburn player who you interviewed at halftime last year in the Auburn-Alabama game. So a Pat here today does the game on the Alabama radio network, on the Auburn radio network in the state of Alabama. Tommy Agee 
takes it out to the 33-yard line, and it will be third down and four for the Auburn Tigers as we have reached the halfway mark of the second quarter. Seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. Georgia on top, seven to three. Well, here we have a third and what might be a passing situation, but it could also be a running situation. It's one of those third and four and a half type plays. Jackson, the tailback, A.G., the fullback. And Bo gets the pick, breaks a couple of tackles, gets into Georgia territory, cuts back, picks up a block. He's inside the 20, and he'll go all the way. Touchdown, Jackson, and Auburn has the lead. must have heard us talking about the hyphen. That's how you win the hyphen, like that. Bo must have heard us talk. Third down, you pitch the ball to Bo Jackson. Breaks the tackle there. Now watch as he traverses, and you see some of that 4-2 speed. He picks up a block from Trey Gaines, a key block in the secondary, and then he just coasts into the end zone. Chris Johnson, point after, is good. 3 to play first half after the explosion by Bo 67 yard gallop at 10 to 7 over from 1969 to 1971 this man did it all we were talking moments ago about Pat Sullivan his favorite receiver in those days was Terry Beasley but Sullivan rewrote the press guide for Auburn got the Heisman in 1971 and until Doug Flutie won the award last year. He was the only quarterback to win that for many, many years. Auburn leads 10 to 7. By the way, in Bo Jackson's four years at Auburn, that's the first touchdown he has scored against Georgia. And he does it in pretty spectacular fashion. As Johnson's kick is down in the end zone and Georgia will take over at the 20-yard line to begin this next drive with 7.03 to go. There he is. Bo Jackson who has now carried 10 times for 113 yards. He, with that deep thigh bruise, has been hurt the past couple of weeks and has limited his playing time. And as a consequence, it's the first time he has been over 100 yards since the Mississippi State game, which preceded the contest with Florida and East Carolina. Jackson is the quarterback. He sends... Lane in motion, and Worley takes it out to the 24-yard line after Osborne had been the man moving on the play, and it's second down and seven. Bo was already the career rushing leader for Auburn. He passed up James Brooks earlier this year, 4,040 yards coming into today's game. Brooks had 3,523. Second and six. And the new quarterback is Wayne Johnson. And he's written down back at the 20-yard line by Tracy Rocker. The fact that Johnson is in the game doesn't mean a whole lot about Jackson. Vince Dooley was saying that he likes to get Johnson in at least for a series or two in the first half. You mentioned earlier that Tracy Rocker, a freshman, is really the catalyst of a strong defensive line for the Tigers. He chases down Johnson. Good pursuit there. He had 72 tackles and four sacks coming into today's game. So Johnson, who was the opening night starter, a redshirt freshman out of Columbus, Georgia, asks for and receives a timeout here preparatory to a third and 10 fall from the 20-yard line. 5.50 to go in the half with Auburn on top by three. Okay. Coming up at halftime, of course, we'll bring you up to date on all of the scores, including some big upsets today. Wisconsin highlighting that particular category with a victory over Ohio State. All coming up at the half. Meanwhile, there's Bo Jackson. A 67-yard touchdown gallop. He's up and over 100 yards today in that Heisman battle, but it's more than that, even though 
a lot of the stories preparatory to this game dealt with who would win the Heisman. Jackson among those who will tell you, hey, we're here to win the ball game, not to win me the Heisman necessarily. That would be a nice byproduct, but Auburn thinking about a W. They lead 10 to 7. Georgia has the football third and 10 at the 20-yard line. Johnson scrambling now. Runs into his own man and gets pushed out of bounds in the 15, and a flag is thrown. Tracy Rocker literally rocked him out past the boundary, and that lane hit, if indeed that is the call, may mean a first down for Georgia. From the end zone, you might get a better look and see if it is indeed a late hit by Tracy Rocker, number 74. That's kind of, I don't know. That's on the fringe. Shaky, shaky call. It's on the boundary, but it's also on the fringe. Yeah. So he rocked that little baby to sleep. Not quite sure I, I throw the flag there. And they're going to march it off now. And it's going to be close to a first down, but just short of the first down to the 29. Well, the dead ball foul, a late hit out of bound by the defense. It's an automatic first down. So an automatic first down is what it is. That might be a big play. That's yeah. the kind of play it uh, sort of sneaks up on you. you. Might think back and say the game turned on a call like that. Could very well. Because they would have forced Georgia to punt. And with time running down in the first half, Auburn may have been able to control the football the rest of the way, or at least most of the rest of the way in this half. Up the middle goes Henderson as he takes it out to the 37-yard line. When you get a break like that, the offense sometimes fires up. The whole momentum of the game changes. Georgia has not been nice to opponents here in this stadium, particularly in the decade of the 80s. Second down three from the 37-yard line. That's Osborne lining up on a wing to the right. And Johnson keeping the first down and getting it out to the 43 yard line Ben McCurdy making the tackle under five minutes now remaining in the half and the first down remember the Bulldogs still thinking about a Southeastern Conference Championship it's possible but they do need some help Tennessee would have to lose to either Kentucky or Vanderbilt Worley out to the 48 and naturally Georgia would have to win this game. Let's go to Al Troutwick. Now I've decided to really see what it's like between the hedges. These were put here at Stanford Stadium in 1929 by a Mr. Charlie Martin who wanted this stadium to look like the Rose Bowl. And of course to really be between the hedges here at Stanford you've got to be on the playing field. Back to you. Trout we always had the feeling you were between something. We weren't quite sure what. <laughs> Second and five from the 48-yard line. And up the middle, it's Henderson for a first down to the 36. Tommy Powell makes the tackle. And indeed, that late hit penalty may prove very, very large. Henderson, number 30, who, as he did last week so effectively against Florida, takes the quick inside dive play, gets in behind Burroughs and Anderson, the bell cow center really turns it into a big gainer before Tom Powell one of the best players in the secondary makes the tackle first down from the 36 yard line and it's Tate number 32 who takes the ball for a gain of two Powell comes up from the safety spot to make the tackle Anderson we talked about his nickname is the bell cow and of course Vince Dooley feels that he is as good as any center he has ever coached he said in the last nine weeks he's playing about as well as any offensive lineman he's ever had there is the man Vince Dooley who thought about but elected not to run for the United States Senate earlier this year second and seven Johnson stops at the 33 yard line so it'll be third down and seven coming up and a very big call here for 
Johnson and the Bulldogs as the clock ticks down to 255. Auburn on top 10 to 7. Late in the first half. Lane is sent wide to the right. Tate is the tailback. Smith sets up as the tight end to the right side. And after the fake to Tate, it's Johnson firing short. Well short and out of bounds. And those two guys, Johnson and Hockaday, weren't on the same page that time. What we have here is a breakdown in communication. Johnson thought that Hockaday was running a deep comeback pattern to the outside. Hockaday was running a fly pattern. And the result is an incompletion and also a 51-yard field goal attempt coming for Steve Crumley now, who missed a 50-yarder earlier. Snap is good, and the kick is blocked. And it's picked up at the 45-yard line and hurtling down the sideline with a flag going down is number 93. That's Bruce. Andre Bruce. And Kevin Porter is the man who blocked it. Porter came flying in. A flag is down. An official went down. And I'm wondering if he threw the flag or whether the flag just came out when he was knocked down. Inadvertent dropping, I believe. Kevin Porter, number three, is coming from the outside. And this is classic right here. You can give a clinic on this one. And now it's Andre Bruce, number 93, who does a good mm. job of hurdling right there. That didn't quite look like Edwin Moses, but I'm relatively impressed. First down, Auburn at the 38-yard line with 2.16 to go now in the first half. And Washington giving the ball to Fulwood. Nice move to the outside. Turns it inside the 30 and out of bounds at the 24-yard line. A run out by Gary Moore. And that's your backup tailback, folks. We know how good Bo Jackson is, but this is one of the best backup tailbacks in all of college football. Number 22, Brent Fullwood. Makes a little stutter step, juke step to the outside. He's got the wiggle, he's got the wobble, and he had 642 yards coming into today's game. First down for the Tigers at the 24-yard line. Washington keeps and turns it into a 7- or 8-yard gain as Pat takes it to the 17. Auburn in tremendous shape right now. They're not only deep in Georgia territory, they have all their timeouts left and they elect to use one here, but they can if they judiciously make the right calls, eat up much of the clock and leave Georgia with no time on the other side if they do indeed score and they lead by three. In Athens, Georgia, Al Michaels, Lee Gross Cup, Al Troutwig with you. 154 left on the clock and a half. Auburn ahead by three, and the Tigers have the football at the Georgia 17-yard line, second down, three. So Pat Dye, whose team is trying to win its eighth game in ten, watching his quarterback now, Pat Washington, lead the team up to the line of scrimmage with Fullwood in the game as the sole running back in this set. And he gives it to Fullwood behind some nice blocking, but it doesn't develop, and he is stopped at the 15. John Brantley made a nice play. It looked like Fullwood had a couple of horses out in front of him, but no room developed. Well, the Clydesdales were out in front. But Fullwood can't get started. He's hit there by number 42, John Brantley, the linebacker. He's known as Rambo. Now it is third and one, and Auburn looking toward the bench, the entire unit, there was some confusion, and thus they are forced to use a timeout. That's not exactly what you wanted to do right here. You've got a third and one coming up, and you can't take some time off the clock. So, with timeout here, let's pay a visit to the campus of Auburn. Auburn University. Students who come here have a strong desire for a learning experience that will prepare them for a meaningful career. There's an atmosphere here that promotes new ideas and creative thinking. A college education begins with a strong faculty and a bright group of students. 
and Auburn professors take the time to give their students the attention they need to develop their minds so that those who leave are better prepared to adapt to an ever-changing world or perhaps even to change it. During that break, Washington had the headset on on the sidelines. He talked to the coaches upstairs. Talking about taking time off the clock here, just to elaborate, what you want to do, of course, is you want to score. You want to get a touchdown, if not a field goal. The only thing you'd like to do, though, if you're Auburn, is take as much time off the clock as possible and leave Georgia no time coming back the other way. But there's still a minute 20 to go. It's third and one with a ball at the 15-yard line, and Washington picks up the first down. He gets to the 11. Stopped there by Tony Flack, and now the clock will stop momentarily on the first down. Washington effective once again on the option play, and we will remind you that he was indeed a wishbone quarterback in 1984. We covered him twice in 1984 when he was running the bone. And of course, the idea in the bone is that you outnumber your opponent. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. And Washington to throw, and nearly has it picked off. Greg Williams, number 23, who does not have that much experience in the secondary, but it is an injury-wracked secondary for Georgia on a pass intended for Freddie Wagan. Wagan williams matchup. They're trying to hit Wagan on a deep slant pattern, and it's nearly picked off by number 23, Greg Williams, who's playing a key role today as he fills in in that injured secondary that we talked about earlier. That was one of the concerns of Coach Vince Dooley when I talked to him earlier this week. Second and ten. Fullwood back of A.G. And run out of bounds at the eight-yard line by Tony Flack. So now it is third down coming up from the eight. It's third down and about seven for the first. Eight for the touch, 52 seconds to go in the half, and one timeout for Auburn. And uh, I was wondering, I was just going to ask the question, do you think he'll send Jackson in? And he answered it. Here comes Bo. If, Why you, don't, not? if you don't give him the ball, at least you give the defense something to really think about. Well, you pointed out earlier, it helps the quarterback on the option play because you've got the key on number 34. Third and seven. They give it to Bo. He runs through the middle. There's a flag thrown. Jackson gets to the one-yard line, but a penalty marker was thrown. In fact, there are two. There was one thrown after the inception of the play. I think there's going to be a holding call. And there was also a penalty marker thrown by the linesman at the line of scrimmage. Two flags are down. The defensive team offside. Holding by the offense, the offense. Oh, boy. Well, I was half right. So the holding call, that would have been a, a, a big break for the Bulldogs had they not lined up offside. Instead now, it's third and a short seven at the eight-yard line. 47 seconds to go, first half. Auburn leading Georgia 10-7. to seven. Last time they had a third and situation, third and long situation like this, they pitched the ball to Jackson. So Bo lines up in the backfield behind A.G. Sellers is in motion, and on a reverse, it's Wagan coming the other way, dives touchdown. What a play! What a call! Jackson looked like he was going to get the pitch, and coming from the other way was Wagan, and that's out of the back of the playbook, and that was a thing of beauty. It's a good point, because this is uncharacteristic of Auburn football to use a gadget play in this situation. Normally, they're very fundamental. Now, watch Wallace, number 78. He wisely does not clip there on Jerry Moss, number three, but gets in the way, and that brings him for the touchdown. And Johnson kicks the extra point. Freddie Wagan, who scored a touchdown on a 13-yard run against Florida State on an end around, does it again, diving into the end zone, and let's visit the campus of Georgia. That was really a great call by Pat Dye and also a very well-conceived play. 
think about what the defense has to think about. You're thinking about Jackson. You're also thinking about Washington maybe keeping the ball. The last thing you're thinking about is Wagan. The real key to this play, however, at the tail end is number 78, Wallace, screening off number 59, Waters. It would have been so easy for him to clip there. But he just stood there, screened him off, and that enabled Wagan to get in for an eight-yard touchdown. Executed nicely. Also, you saw him fake to A.G. So, in fact, the defense had to think about A.G., had to think about Washington maybe keeping, obviously had to think about Jackson, and the next thing you know, you got Wagan running the other way. Love that call. Nap to kick off. A little squibber. Georgia having trouble coming up with a football, but maintaining possession at the 23-yard line. It's Freddie Lane hanging on to it with 23 seconds to go in the half. And Georgia with two timeouts left. Let's see it again at the end of the As play. As I pointed out earlier, the key to this is the screen by Wallace on Waters that enables Wagan to slip by and break into the end zone, and he has to break one more tackle. That's by Gary Moss, number three. But I agree with you. It was a great call. Mm. Uncharacteristic of Pat Dye in Auburn football. Love to see that baby diagram on the chalkboard. From the 23-yard line, first and 10. Johnson is still in the quarterback. They're going to keep it on the ground with McCluskey. So the Bulldogs will not go to the air. They'll be content to go into the dressing room down by 10 at the half. One of the reasons he can come up with a call like that is because he now has much more multiplicity and flexibility in his offense with the I formation. Well, all of the scoring in the first half takes place in the second quarter. And the teams go to the locker room at Sanford Stadium on a warm day. As we approach 5 o'clock in the evening, it still feels like it's in the upper 70s. And 82,000 looking on. 17-7 to 7 the score. Let's go to Al Troutwick and Pat Dye. All right, Al. Coach, you must be fairly proud of that call you made for Wigand, who scored that touchdown. That was a very well, creative. Well, I didn't, I didn't make that call. Jack Crow made that call in the press box. And uh, I didn't actually, I told I, I was upset because we ran it because it was a third down play. I wanted the ball in the center of the field if we if we didn't make a first down, so we kick a field goal. But it was a great call that now that it worked. What did he see that forced him to make that call? Well, they had been running everybody to the to the uh, motion out of uh, on unbalanced line. And it's worked just as like, like it's, it worked against Florida and some other folks. So uh, when they work, it's a great call when they don't. But all those fans have been on Jack Coke, give him a little credit because he made the call and it was a great one. Give me the highlights and lowlights for the first half for Auburn. Well, I think the low was for us was certainly the filing on penalty out of bounds over there that, that uh, we had them backed up. And uh, I think probably the, lo the long run by Bo and, uh, that, uh, you know, put us ahead, picked our people up and... Uh, we got a lot of football left to play. Georgia's got a great football team, and and we are trying to to get there. All right, you're on your way. Thank you, Coach. So far, it's 10-7, 17-7 to correct that. We'll be back with halftime in a moment. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Mr. Goodrich. Keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. And by Team Xerox, the right products and right people all working together. We'll be back with our halftime activity after this commercial message and a word from your local station. Thank you very much. It's obvious we got to stop the big play. You can't let Bo uh, do what he did. It was a great run, and the reverse was a great call. And the other big play was blocking the field goal. Uh, the timing was slow. So uh, I, those three big plays, uh, I think, is the difference right now where we are. So we've got to minimize their big play ability, start making plays in the second half, and uh, I think we've got a good chance to win this football game. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Coach Vince Dooley of the Georgia Bulldogs. It's 17-7. When we return on ABC's College Football, the kickoff for the second half. And again, just to set the scene again in the SEC, Tennessee controls its destiny. They go to the Sugar Bowl if they win their next two games. Georgia still has a chance. If Tennessee were to lose or tie one of its remaining two with Kentucky or Vanderbilt, but they still have to win this one, do the Bulldogs. And they're down by 10 as we start the second half. Chris Johnson to kick things off for Auburn. Freddie Lane and Tron Jackson are the deep men for the Bulldogs at the goal line. Jackson on your left. Deep kick. 
through the end zone. Georgia starting at the 20. Let's look at the offer and defense. Gerald Robinson, the defensive end, number 95. Then the freshman we've been talking about through the first half, Rocker. Coleman, 5'11", 234, squat, but very good. Gerald Williams, outstanding, number 98. Pat Thomas, one linebacker, had a good first half. Russ Carricker, number 47. A sophomore from America's Georgia, and Gary Kelly on the outside, number 42. Bulldogs at the 20. Jackson is back in after Johnson had finished up the half at quarterback. And James turns and gives it to the first man through. Keith Henderson for a gain of two. Kevin Porter is one cornerback. Jimmy Warren, number 45, the other. And then the strong safety, Arthur Johnson. The free safety is Tom Powell, who has six interceptions this season. He's up amongst the country leaders. Second down and eight. The two freshman backs, Worley and Henderson. Worley is the tailback. Jackson looks back the other way and hits Herman Archie for a first down. Just in front of Dooley, he is rolled out at the 34-yard line. First and 10. The dogs offensively, Jackson and Worley and Henderson, but we'll see a lot of Tate and McCluskey as well. Hockaday and Lane are the wideouts. Sadowski the tight end, and there's the rest of the line. First down after a 12-yard pickup, ball at the 34-yard line. Jackson to the air again. Hits Worley, has some room, and another first down at the 46-yard line. Gain of 12 again, Russ Carriker makes the tackle on the freshman out of Lumberton, North Carolina. Look at Worley from his tailback position on a little swing pass. It's what's known as a slip screen, and what makes it work here is a block to the outside, then he makes a cutback here. You see some of the moves in the open field speed that has made him so explosive. He has 4-4 four, four speed in the 40-yard dash. Henderson takes the ball just about to the 50-yard line. It'll be second and seven, and let's look at the halftime number. I pointed out in the first quarter how everything was pretty much equal. Well, look at what's happened here as a result of what happened in the second quarter. Auburn now taking the lead in total yards, particularly in rushing yards, 171 to 103, mostly as a result of the big play by Bo Jackson. Second and seven from the 49-yard line, and with Worley in motion and into the pattern, over the middle and complete to the 36-yard line, number 87, Sadowski. This is where Jackson is particularly effective because of his threat as a runner. He's looking for Sadowski, number 87, who's running a sideline cut. He takes the ball and then does a hook slide. Just under Tom Powell. Was he safe? He got the call. Right. First down, Bulldogs at the 36-yard line. Jackson, fake. And the keeper nets nothing. Gerald Robinson, number 95, gets credit for that tackle. Early third quarter, Auburn on top, 17-7, and the Bulldogs trying to narrow the gap to three. Second and ten, Bulldogs at the Auburn 36. Archie in motion. Worley, gain of four. Tracy Rocker, number 74, makes the tackle. Rocker, who had an outstanding first half, off to a good start now in the second as well. Florida squeaks by Kentucky, 15-13. Tennessee. Two wins away now from the Sugar Bowl. They beat Ole Miss. Alabama does in South and Mississippi by 11. Third and seven. Jackson, and unable to handle it, Hockaday. Off his fingertips on what would have been a first down completion. Hockaday appears to lose his concentration there because this ball is thrown pretty well to the outside on the sideline cut. It's just where it should be. 
thrown low and outside. Hockaday, who has been their most consistent receiver, not a big play man, but a guy you normally think would make that catch very easily. So now Crumley will attempt a 50-yard field goal. He missed one from 50. He had one blocked from 51. So a third long attempt. This time he gets the kick away. It is long enough, and it is good. A career best for the freshman whose longest had been 46. So Steve Crumley following in the footsteps of a pretty good one, Kevin Butler, who was here for four years and did a great job. And Butler is now the kicker for the unbeaten Chicago Bears. Crumley, after his 50-yard field goal, to kick off. Short angled kick, fielded at the 20 by Kyle Collins. And he runs it back out to the 29-yard line. And we'll get a word with Al Troutwick. Al, no question, as you've mentioned, this is one of the great traditions of the South, Auburn and Georgia, first playing in 1892. But the University of Georgia was founded in 1785 and is now celebrating its 200th anniversary. The city of Athens wasn't named until 1806, and by that time it was already the center of culture and education. And the founding fathers of the city felt that it should be named after the city of Athens in Greece, which was already, for centuries, a cultural and educational center. Back to you. Thank you, sir. Good history lesson. From the 28-yard line, first and 10. It's Jackson tries to exploit a hole in the middle and comes close to getting the first down. He's out to close to the 38. Calvin Ruff, the defensive end, as we look at the Bulldogs. Defensive tackle, Henry Williams, 237-pounder. Henry Harris weighs 269. Jake Richardson is a 257-pound senior. Greg Waters. Buddy himself at 234. Bill Mitchell leads the team in tackles at a Dalton, Georgia. John Brantley, a sophomore linebacker, plays the other side at a Wildwood, Florida. They measure. It's that close. And it's second down. Greg Waters says, don't call me, buddy. Call me Mr. Waters. And Ker Kerwin Bell will do that after last week. And it's 63234. If he wants us to do it, we will accede to his request as well. He's a hawk. Second and an inch at the 38-yard line. 11-14 to go in the third period. Auburn leading Georgia 17 to 10. They let Bo do it, and he can't do it. He stops at the 37-yard line by Henry Harris. Harris and Bill Mitchell both came flying through to make sure Bo couldn't get started. Defensive backfield, Gary Moss is one corner. And then Greg Williams starting at the other today. John Little is the strong safety. And Tony Flack, the serious looking Flack, the free safety. Third down. Game face. Two, yep. Third and two, the crowd rises as one, exhorting the dog defense. And it's Jackson who can't get it. Tony Flack, Greg Williams came up from the secondary along with Mitchell, and they all converged to stop him. Feed these dogs some bully bones. Look at the swarming look of the Georgia split 60 defense here, led by Tony Flack, number 88, Calvin Ruff, number 86. Flack, number 8 in the secondary, was up there very fast. Lewis Colbert to do the kicking. That's a tremendous emotional boost for the Georgia Bulldogs. What they just did, wobbly kick, line drive, caught at the 23, and run back to the 37 by John Little. So they stop Bo Jackson on second and an inch, and third and two, and gets the ball back. There was no runner in college football to compare with this man, number 34, Herschel Walker. The cry here was, let the big dog eat. Eat he did. A lot of yards and the Heisman Trophy in 1982, 40 years after Fireball Frankie Sinkwich had won the Heisman Trophy for these same Georgia Bulldogs. 
You mentioned 80, 81, 82. There are very few better runners in 85 as well. John Heisman, of course, was the Auburn coach. That was back in 1895 through 1899. So now Walker's alma mater. Georgia with the football at the 37-yard line. First down and a fumble. A scramble for the ball, and Georgia maintains possession. But Jackson ran into McCluskey that time, and the ball came loose, but the Bulldogs have it back. This is just a mix-up in the backfield. Start down on the option play. McCluskey should not be there if they're running the lead option. He should be leading outside. Fortunately, it's Burroughs, number 69, the right guard, who is alert enough to see the, uh, the fumble there, cover the football, and save the drive. Second and 13, and Lars Tate gets it back near the original line of scrimmage. Spotted at the 37, and upcoming will be a third and 10 for the Bulldogs. On the subject of Heisman Trophy winners, here's a man who hopes that he has that baby in his showcase pretty soon. Comparisons are obvious. Vince Dooley says they're like twins. He said he's the same size, same speed, great all-around athlete. Same number. Same number. Third and ten. Jackson drops at the 39-yard line. Andre Bruce, number 93. Stopping them with 8-10 to play in the period. So, Georgia to punt. Well, Jackson needed 369 yards coming into today's game to surpass Her Herschel Walker's SEC rushing mark. For Herschel did it in three seasons. Chris Carpenter, who had a 57-yard beauty in the first quarter, hasn't kicked since snap but he comes down with it and gets off a very high kick not nearly as much distance as the last time fair catch call for and contact made by Georgia at the 27 yard line I believe the reason for the flag contact made by Mike Brown number 49 Stop him. 27 that was only a 34 yard boost let's watch Mike Brown Number 49. Well, no contact, but they're saying he was too close to it. He was too close. That's a real marginal call. It too close to the receiver against the kicking team. Don't know about that call, but they marked it off anyway. Now it comes to the 32. That's where Auburn has the ball. Nine for Georgia. Mike Brown, the rover back. It's too close to number 19, Trey Gaines, the receiver here. You must allow him the allotted yardage. Two yards is the ruling. So it states two yards must be allowed on the catch. It was awfully close. First down, Auburn, as A.G., who normally serves a, as the blocking back, occasionally gets to carry the ball, takes it up the middle. Final score in what must have been a wild one. Air Force had the lead, but back come the Cougars to beat Air Force. Pay the Falcons their first loss. Brigham Young, 28, Air Force, 21. Second down and six from the 36. Washington. Fires complete for a first down to Scott Bolden, who makes his first catch of the day, number 24. And he is out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Just to give you the ruling on that fair catch, no player of the kicking team may be within two yards of a player positioned to catch a scrimmage kick while the ball is in the downward flight. The receiver must be given an unmolested opportunity to catch a kick. So it's one of those right-on-the-margin calls. And as it turns out, it only cost him five yards. First down from the 47-yard line. Washington. Hit back at the 43 by Paul Giles, a freshman out of Monroe, Georgia. 6'4", 267-pound freshman. The purpose, of course, of most rules in college football is for safety. When the game first got started back in 1876, there were 61 rules. Today, there are 748 rules 
with 79 exceptions. I think they do it to confuse announcers sometimes. And about 4,000 different interpretations of said rule. Second and 14 from the 43-yard line. Washington. Nice pass caught by Trey Gaines. And he is out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Trey Gaines, good catch and move. And Auburn has it deep in Georgia territory. Craig Gaines, a junior split in, has been one of the most consistent receivers for Auburn, not normally a passing team. He's running a crossing route here. This is one of Washington's better passes. It's thrown a little bit behind him, but it is into the open area of the coverage. Good job of reaching back in the secondary, and Gaines finally run out along the sideline by Moss. First down, Tigers at the Bulldog 22. 536 to play third period. Auburn with the ball and a seven-point lead. Bo stop. Tony Flack and Calvin Russ converging. Bo can do. Bo cannot do on that play. Second down and ten. Two good defensive teams. A lot of times when you get two clubs that excel on defense, you have a dull game. It's been anything but a good one. Second and ten at the 23. Jackson again. Nobody can lay down a block, and down goes Jackson for a loss. Ruff and Moss in on the stop, and so Ruff has stopped them twice in a row. Well, the last time, the last time we covered a game here in Athens, we had a good one. That was in 1978. 29-28, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Dogs won on the last play of the game. Amp Arnold, two-point play. Best game I think we've ever covered on television. Tremendous comeback. Yeah, I think that's the best game, uh, most exciting game we've had in yep. eight or nine years. Third down and 15. At the 27-yard line, flags go down, and the play is dead before the snap. As Henry Harris came bolting through, unless he was drawn off, that'll be five against the dog. Bowling Green wins again, and Bowling Green is still unbeaten. Baylor still trying to win a berth in the Cotton Bowl, leading Rice. Texas still has a shot at the Cotton Bowl as well. SMU not eligible for the defensive team, five yard penalty. UCLA trying to go to the Rose Bowl. They've got to beat Arkansas and knock off SC as well. And SC leads Washington 17-13 in the third period. Cougars running big there. Third and ten from the 23. Washington screen to Jackson. He's inside the 20, the 15, the 10, and Bo goes all the way down to about the 1. They'll spot it at the 3-yard line. I have called Bo Jackson the premier running back in all of college football, and I think right here you can see why. Not only is he dangerous as a runner, also as a receiver. Look at the open field ability after he gets the ball. Juke step, lift leg, power, speed. He has it all. One pro scout told me Bo Jackson graded out higher than any athlete he had ever put down on paper. First and goal from the three. That's Bo's first reception of the season. And he is stopped at the two, driven back by Bill Mitchell, number 56, amongst others. It's an odd statistic, something... Kelly Hayes points out to me that you wouldn't figure first time they've thrown to Bo Jackson this season. Well, first time he's caught one anyway. Of course, Auburn had only thrown the ball and completed it on 72 occasions in nine games. That's eight completions a game. Second and goal from the two. They'll give it to Fullwood who replaces Jackson and he's wrapped up. Ruff and Flack converge on the tackle. 
So a very big play coming up here. Third and goal. Bo stays on the sideline. Fullwood is the tailback. To the wide side of the field comes Washington. Stop at the three. Henry Harris in on the tackle. And in comes the field goal unit. This is a big defensive play by Harris as we look from the low angle here on the option play. Momentarily, it appears that Washington has some room, but Harris leads the charge as a whole host of Georgia's tacklers settle in to stop the play. Chris Johnson with a little chip shot. 20 yarder and it's blocked. And Georgia gets it back at the 20 yard line. Rusty Beasley, a freshman. Number 20 is the man with the block. Rusty Beasley, number 20, a freshman defensive back, six foot 185, comes from the outside and makes a superlative effort there to block this kick. And now the momentum seems to be swinging back towards Georgia. Auburn has scored on the last three possessions of the first half. The ebb and flow of this one. Georgia has the ball down by seven. Moment as a bulldog. Big block field goal attempt. It's still 17 to 10. And next week, well, why should 1985 be any different? Every year it's always the same. Nebraska, Oklahoma, a huge one in the Big Eight. National telecast for you. 3 o'clock next Saturday, 3 Eastern time on ABC. Bulldogs have it. 149 to go in the third quarter. They trail by seven. Worley stopped after a gain of one. Auburn 17, Georgia 10. Second down, call it eight, picked up two out of the 22-yard line. That's Lane in motion. And it's Henderson carrying the ball out to the 25-yard line. When they unpile and regroup, it'll be third down and five with a minute now to go in the third quarter. Big third and five right now for the Bulldogs. We had a scoreless first quarter. Auburn led 17-7 at the half. And only a long field goal by the Dogs on the board here in period three. Third and five. Jackson throwing. And incomplete. Herman Archie was not inbound. No first down for the Bulldogs. They'll have to kick it. Herman Archie is tall at 6'5 and a dependable receiver. He's running the sideline cut. It's clear that he is not inside the boundary. In the kick. Chris Carpenter. Trey Gaines is back at the 30-yard line for Auburn. Very deep, beautiful kick. All the way back to the 19 goes Gaines. Tries to come back the other way, and he stops at the 23-yard line. Another great kick by Carpenter. Two out of three for him. 57 yards and a four-yard run back. And Carpenter's a freshman. You think the pro scouts are looking at him? 57 yards twice today he's done that in the air. The freshman. Giants and Redskins. A great game normally under any circumstance, and particularly so now with the Giants trying to stay atop the NFC East along with Dallas. And the Redskins in dire need of a victory to keep any hope alive of getting into the playoffs. Monday night. 
from the 23. With Washington, the quarterback, he gives it to Fullwood, and he takes it out to the 28-yard line. And that should be the final play of the period. So the teams will change in, and we're set up for what could be a fascinating final 15 minutes. This one has a earmark. Auburn leads it 17 to 10. And we'll be back after this commercial message and a word from your local station. Alpha aggressor tank spotted. No, no. 15 minutes to play. Al Michaels with Lee Gross Cup and Al Troutwig in Athens, Georgia. Auburn has the football as we start the fourth period. They have the lead, 17-10. No, no, and as no. Pat Washington leads them up at his second down and five from the 28-yard line. Fullwood is still the tailback, and he takes it. Scrambles out to about the 29-yard line, maybe the 30, but it will be third down and three upcoming. Giles and Mitchell in on the tackle for the Dogs. Spotted at the 29-yard line, third down, four. Look at the uh, play selection throughout the year. You can see it's dominated by the rush through the year and also today Auburn 33 of 43 plays on the ground today Georgia 39 of 50 third and four from the 29 yard line Washington throwing back and at the 42 yard line the catch is made by Jeff Parks number 82 nice grab by Parks on a low throw one of the things we talked about at the top of the show, and we probably should restate it now, is that Pat and I indicated earlier that the work of Pat Washington would be very important. He wanted to get some effective passing to balance out the running attack, particularly the intermediate, the high percentage passes. That time he was right on the money, throwing to Jeff Parks, number 82. Washington is now 5 of 11 for 93 yards. That one net 13. Washington pitching back to Jackson. Bo cannot turn the corner. Stop to the 46-yard line. Greg Williams and Tony Flack making the stop. Earlier, we showed you a graphic illustrating that Jackson has been far more effective in terms of yardage gained in the first half and the second half. That's somewhat deceiving, though. It really doesn't indicate he's getting tired. What it indicates is that early on this season, when he was having those big games, he was coming out early in the third period on a couple of occasions, and thus. His numbers are shifted toward the first half, overweighted in that direction. Second and seven. Washington, nice move to throw it to Jackson, who gets into Georgia territory, the 40, the 30-yard line, and Bo gets to the 25. And Jackson, who had not caught a pass in nine games this season, has caught two in this half. And again, it's the screen pass. Jackson fakes the blast play and then slides out in the left flat and here again you see some of the open field moves the speed the versatility only flack's gotten to know him pretty well today so has boswell forward is back in as the tailback first and ten of the 26 yard line ag game five A.G. last year had a big day against Georgia, picking up 115 yards on nine carries. Today, he's a decoy, a blocker, and sort of a rest stop for the tailback. Second and five to 21. down Auburn from this angle you can get a sense of the quickness of Brent forward the backup tailback one of the things Vince Dooley says is that the bad news that when Bo Jackson is out of there is that Brent forward is in there and vice versa 
So you have a real tandem of tailbacks there. Between them, they have over 2,000 yards rushing coming into today's game. Forward with another year of eligibility. He'll be back next year. Jackson won't. From the 14, forward again. Gets inside the 10. Good move. He was almost tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Winds up getting about eight to the six-yard line. It'll be second and two. From the power eye, forward takes the ball with some depth. And now it's like a triple option for the tailback. He can go inside, he can go straight, or he can go outside. He breaks the tackle there, another one there. Really throws a surge there. And it's John Little, the rover back, number 19, often compared to Terry Hogue, who ultimately makes the tackle. One of the Bulldogs is injured. Cannot pick out exactly who it is for the moment. But the clock is now stopped with 12.02 remaining in the game. And the Georgia defense, which did a scintillating job the last time Auburn got down deep, stopping them. And the injury is a minor one to Greg Williams, who's in there because of other injuries. Miles Smith replacing Tony Flack. Flack playing Williams' spot. And they've had a shift and juggle and the rest of it as you look at some of the scores involving top 10 teams. Iowa and Purdue, look at that one, 24 all. Iowa trying to capitalize on Wisconsin's upset of Ohio State. Second and two. Here's Bo. In for the touchdown. That looked like man against boys. Put the helmet down and see you later. Herschel Walker used to do here. Bo Jackson is doing now. Look at the power. One, two, three tackles. Miles Smith gets the last hit. Chris Johnson kicks the point after, and the Bulldogs are in a big hole again. As Auburn methodically moves down the field, Bo goes in for his second score of the day. We have 11.45 to go. Auburn back up on top by 14 now 24 to 10 with 11:45 to play in the game Bo Jackson gets a breather as the defensive unit will take over Bo has carried the ball 18 times for 116 yards and two touchdowns and he's also caught a couple of key passes today Chris Johnson Kicking off. Lane and Jackson of the deep net. A beauty again. Boy, he's done a nice job today. Johnson booting it all the way through the end zone. And he's a freshman. We've seen Johnson the freshman. And also probably the freshman have their moments. And Chris Carpenter as well, the Georgia kicker. the 20-yard line. James Jackson, the quarterback. He sends Lane in motion. Lane comes back the other way, and then Lane is at the receiving end of the pass, but gains only one. Arthur Johnson comes up to make the tackle. There are the numbers on Bo. And remember that he spent most of the week in the training room, as we said at the top of the show. Recovering from a deep thigh bruise. That's the same injury he suffered as a freshman. It cost him a game and a half then. Made a strong comeback. Second and nine from the 21-yard line. Ron Jackson on his first carry of the day gets to the 40. He would be, if you had a depth chart, the number five running back. I like Sean Jackson. I covered him last year in a ball game against Alabama where he was very effective. Print draw. And it's just a matter of using his speed as he gets to the outside before Tom Powell, the free safety, brings him down in the secondary. It's pretty good for a third string tailback. First down 
And Jackson hits Archie, and he's into Auburn territory and out of bounds, stopping the clock with 10.51 to go. A little switch in the tempo of the game now for Georgia. They've got to start throwing the ball a little bit more on first and second down and step up the action because with 10.51 left and trailing 24-10, they can't worry too much about establishing their running game. Bulldogs at the 48-yard line, first and 10. A little swing pass is incomplete, intended for Tron Jackson. Second down and 10. Let's go back after a scoreless first period. Review the scoring for you. Johnson kicked that 49-yard field goal, 3-0 Auburn. Then James Jackson took it in from three. Georgia had the lead, but Bo with that 67-yard run, 10-7. And then Wagan on a beautifully conceived and executed play made it 17-7 at halftime. Third period, Crumley kicked the 50-yard field goal 17-10, and Jackson ended Auburn's last drive with a touchdown scamper. So it's 24-10 as James Jackson takes the ball to the 44-yard line. It'll be third down, six. Pretty important play coming up here. Jackson, in these situations in the past, has liked the sprint out pass to the wide side of the field with either the curl in or the sideline cut by his wide receiver. Third down and a long six from inside the 45. Jackson. Scrambling. Looking for the first down and came very close to getting it. Close enough that if he's short, I'm sure they'll go for it. Harold Holman makes the tackle. A little bit of improvisation, and he gets to the 38-yard line. And it will be either a fourth down and inches or a first down. We'll have to wait and see. He appears to be shot, and he is. Half a yard. And Georgia wants the measurement. So the Bulldogs will have it with 9.41 remaining in the game and fourth and inches. This is when you'd love to have Bo Jackson in your backfield. Or Herschel Walker. Yeah. Or Red Grange. <laughs> Frank Sinkwich. Pretty good scramble, though. Of course, this is uh, the home of uh, another former scrambling quarterback. Once. The Duke Park. College. Park. Sir Francis. Sir Francis. Fourth down. And a yard or less. And the 39. To Worley. He's got it. He gets to the 37-yard line. Pat Thomas makes the tackle. So the drive is still alive. With nine and a half to go in the game. I like that call on fourth and inches go to the pitch instead of the, the pure power play because it gives him a chance to either cut back or stay wide. Good cut back running that time by Worley. First and ten. Bulldogs at the Tiger 37. Lane in motion. The fake pitch to Worley. Jackson going deep for the end zone. Knocked away. Good defensive play by Jimmy Warren. Intended for Stanley Blaylock running to the corner. Jimmy Warren breaking it up. Almost intercepted by Warren. So on first and ten, they go for it from the 37-yard line. Second and ten at the 37-yard line. Ron Jackson gets only one, takes it to the 36. Nate Hill makes the tackle. Third down and 10 coming up. And 
And we welcome those of you watching Penn State, Notre Dame. Georgia with the football third and 10 at the Auburn 37-yard line. Georgia trailing by 14 as James Jackson goes back to pass, throws and has it picked off at the 23-yard line by Kevin Porter. So Auburn stopping a Georgia drive. Freddie Lane was the intended receiver. Auburn leading 24-10. The Tigers get the ball back at their own 23-yard line. Fred Lane, the wide receiver, who has been effective also on reverses, is trying to run a sideline cut and watch the work of Kevin Porter, number three. It's in perfect position. Gets the feet inbound. Interception for the Tigers. And that's his fourth of the season. Scoring summary, a scoreless first quarter. Second period, Johnson, a 49-yard field goal, 3-0 Auburn. James Jackson gave Georgia the lead on a three-yard run, second period. Then, Bo Jackson on a 67-yard touchdown run, 10-7 Auburn. Freddie Wagand on an eight-yard reverse. At halftime, Auburn led 17-7. Then, in the third period, a long field goal by Crumley, a 50-yarder made it 17-10, but Auburn ended a long drive with Bo Jackson taking it in from six, his second score of the day. Bo Jackson, by the way, has carried the ball 18 times for 116 yards and two touchdowns, and he's played part-time because Fullwood is the other tailback, and it's Fullwood in the game right now. From the 24-yard line, this is Fullwood carrying through the middle, and he takes it out to the 28-yard line for a gain of five. Second down and five. The man who intercepted the pass, Kevin Porter, is fourth of the season, sophomore, and ironically, a Georgian. There are a lot of Georgians who play for Auburn. Ironically, just one Alabama player on the Georgia roster. Call it the Underground Railroad. So and, so and there's an Auburn, Georgia, believe it or not. That's right. The town about 20 miles from here. That Underground Railroad, though, is only going one way these days. <laughs> That was Georgia's second turnover. By the way. On second and five, Washington pitching back to Fullwood, and he is stopped at the 29-yard line. Final play coming up for the Georgia defense. Just to reset the story in the Southeastern Conference, Florida leads the conference race, but they're ineligible for the Sugar Bowl. Alabama now 4-1-1, but the team in the driver's seat is Tennessee. You can see they are 3-1-0. and If they beat Kentucky and Vanderbilt in their last two games and the Vols go to New Orleans. Georgia must win this game and hope for a Tennessee loss or tie to go to the Sugar Bowl. That's the way it stacks up at the moment. But Tennessee controls its own destiny. On third down, it's Fullwood, and he is shot shy in the first down, and so the Bulldogs will be getting the ball back as the clock has now run down to under seven minutes to play. Pat Dye in his fifth season at Auburn after prior stints at East Carolina and Wyoming. Watching his team trying to go eight and two. He was a watch charm guard. Playing for the Bulldogs back in the late 50s. Watch charm meaning anyone under 200 pounds back in those times was considered small. Lewis Colbert to punt. Lane is back deep. Lane standing at his own 27 yard line. Good, high, and relatively deep kick. In fact, a very deep kick. A fair catch called for, fumbles, and recovered by Lane himself at the 14-yard line. Another beautiful kick by Colbert. Again, a man who has a club foot. But it hasn't bothered him one iota today or all season. This one, a 54-yarder. Just a breakdown in concentration here by Lane as he fumbles the ball. Looks momentarily that he's going to lose it. So the dogs get it back with 6-10 to play in the game. When Bill bought his new business, he was Sanford Stadium, Athens, Georgia. Al Michaels with Lee Groskup and Al Troutwick. Auburn leads Georgia 24-10. And with 6-10 to go, the Bulldogs, a team noted for their running game and not their air game, has to go to work in a hurry from the 14-yard line with James Jackson, the quarterback. Jackson under some pressure. Lost one. Incomplete out to the 35-yard line. Keith Henderson, the running back, out there in the area, but covered well, and it's second down and 10. 
Jackson now 8 of 16 passing for 117 yards, and we talked at the very top of the show about the importance of balance for both teams. But you can forget that concept right now because Georgia trailing 24 to 10. They've got to start putting it up. And the Bulldogs are a team that coming into the game have thrown only 13 passes per game. Tip and incomplete intended for Herman Archie off his fingertips, and it's third down and 10. Vince Dooley has not seen a Georgia Bulldog team lose two games in Sanford Stadium in one season since 1979. But they're on the verge of doing that now. They lost to Alabama on opening night. Trail by 14 here. Pat Guy taking his team into Athens, seeking an eighth win in 10 outings, with Alabama still to come on the schedule. On third and 10, Jackson sets up the screen, hits Henderson, Henderson looking for some room, fights his way out to the 20, but he's shy of the first down by five. Holman makes the stop, and fourth down comes up with 5.40 to go in the game. So the Bulldogs probably forced to go for it now, trailing by two touchdowns, fourth and five from the 20. And Fred Lane, number four, comes in with the play. They send Lane left, Herman Archie to the right. And Lane goes in motion. With Jackson rolling right, looking and throwing, and complete at the 30-yard line to Archie. And he has the first down. So Georgia stays alive, just barely. Arthur Johnson nearly picked it off, but Archie was able to make the grab. 5.06 to go. This is a clutch pass on fourth and five as Jackson sprints to his right, looks to his wide receiver, Archie, who is 6'5", and is curled back to the outside. Kevin Porter is there, but he gets in front of him for the valuable first down to keep the drive going. From the 30-yard line, Jackson throwing over the middle. Man wide open at Cockaday. Inside the 45, takes it to the 41 of Auburn. 447 to go in the game. Hockaday, who dropped an easy pass along the sideline earlier, is running a deep curl in route from his wide receiver position on the right. He works in front of Kevin Porter, number three, takes the ball and turns back to the outside for more valuable yardage before Tom Powell, number nine, gets in for the final hit. First and ten from the 41 of Auburn. Tron Jackson on the ground, and he scrambles to the 30-yard line, and that's a first down. 4.39 to go. The clock momentarily stopped for the first down. For the record, Georgia has all of its timeouts left, but that won't matter until the next drive. They've got to get in this time first. They've got to score quick to get the ball back and score again. First and 10. Dogs from the 30-yard line. Jackson. Steps up, throws, and it's incomplete, and interference is called on Tommy Powell. He was all over Troy Sadowski, and the Bulldogs get a big break. Tom Powell, number nine, the best athlete in the secondary, is covering Sadowski, number 87, who's working down the middle, trying to get in front of the safety man. I think it was clearly interference. Two flags, in fact. And here's the call. So they line it up and they will march it off. Joe Hicks, the referee, a 15 yard penalty that moves it to the 15 yard line. Hurls interference by the defense, automatic first down. First and 10, 15 yard line, 422 to go. Auburn and White leading 24 to 10. Lane and Archie are both to the right. Jackson looking for the sideline and at least got out of bounds, and that stops it with 415 run out by Pat Thomas and Russ Carricker. Next week. As usual, 
Nebraska and Oklahoma in a huge one. Nebraska second in the country, Oklahoma sixth. 1985, no different from other seasons. When it comes to Nebraska against Oklahoma, you'll see it at 3 Eastern time next Saturday. Second and 11 from the 16-yard line. Jackson looking for the end zone, and Archie has it knocked away. He was bumped on the play. The crowd wants interference, but Warren was making an effort for the ball. So no flag. Third down. Jimmy Warren is covering the wide receiver, Herman Archie, number 81. They both have a right to the football. Jackson is now 11 out of 21 for 162 yards as Dooley watches a third and 11 from the 16-yard line, and they keep it on the ground. Give it to Henderson, who slips at the 12-yard line. So they try to fool him, kept it on the ground. Now fourth down coming up and timeout called by Tron Jackson because it's fourth and six. And they better make sure they've got the play in sync here. With four minutes exactly to play at Athens. And Auburn leading by two touchdowns. While in commercial, all 11 Auburn defenders as a unit went to the sidelines to consult with the defensive assistants and Pat Dye to talk about stopping a fourth and six upcoming here with exactly four minutes to go in the game. Meanwhile, Penn State stretching its advantage 36 to nothing. About nine minutes still remaining in that one. So at the end of this one, which figures to end before the game in Happy Valley, we'll send you back to State College for the balance of that fray. Penn State has been winning ugly. Today yeah. they put some beauty into their attack. Fourth and six. Georgia from the 12 as Jackson. Looks for an open man, throws, and complete. Juggled by Cassius Osborne, who couldn't hold on. And so the Bulldogs give up the football. They'll have to take their timeout to two remaining on defense and hope to get it back again. You've heard that this is a game of inches? Well, believe it. Cassius Osborne is this close to having a touchdown. Jimmy Warren is the man who applies the hit that finally dislodges him from the football. Kind of a crowd in there. Stanley Black was in there also. So now Auburn figuring to keep it on the ground and eat up the clock. And this is Bo Jackson, who's a pretty good man to eat up any clock and clean it as well, taking it to the 16. Five. 24-10 Auburn on top as the clock ticks down. Again, the Penn State Notre Dame game behind us in terms of time. And so when this one is over, we will send you back to the conclusion of that one. Second down and five. But a chance here for all of you to see Bo Jackson perhaps again. Instead, it's easy the fullback carrying on this play off to the 15-yard line, and it will be third down and six as John Brantley makes the tackle for the Bulldogs. If it holds now, Auburn would be eight and two. They have only a minuscule chance of lining up in the Sugar Bowl, but you know that Auburn will be going to some bowl. As far as Georgia is concerned, their Sugar Bowl chances will go down the drain with a loss here, but Georgia two with a mark of seven, two, and one and Georgia Tech yet to play, figures to wind up in a bowl. Third down and six. And Washington gets dragged down by Calvin Ruff. So it's fourth down. Georgia did not use a timeout on defense. As the clock continues to run down, 222, 221 and counting, and they will be getting the ball back. Lewis Colbert out of his own end zone to kick 10-man front, so they'll try to block it as they send him charging, but he gets it away. And a fair catch is called for and made at the 46-yard line by John Little. Bulldogs have it there in Auburn territory, 159 to go. 
Auburn leading 24 to 10. Georgia with the football at the Auburn 46 yard line. Let's go back to the second quarter. Here was Bo Jackson with Georgia leading 7 to 3. Breaking a tackle, slipping another, getting into Georgia territory and scampering 67 yards for what turned out to be his first touchdown against Georgia in four years. And it was vintage Bo because you saw the speed, the power, and the broken field running ability. Wayne Johnson is the new quarterback, a freshman, as Dooley tries another hand here. He sets up the screen and throws it short intended for Sean Jackson. Wayne Johnson, if he looks familiar to many of you, was the starting quarterback in the opener, the game that we televised Labor Day night. From here, he started the first two games, and then James Jackson took over, though Johnson has seen a good deal of action. And he would arguably be the better passer, just slightly. Second down, 10, from the 46. Johnson with a deep drop and a lot of protection and throws complete, but only a minimal gain to the 43-yard line. Jackson again makes the catch. Tron Jackson clock down to a minute 39. College football scoreboard will be coming up. We'll be filling in on everything that's happened thus far. Third down and seven here with a minute and a half. Johnson scrambling under a lot of pressure, throwing and finding the open man at the 34-yard line, Herman Archie. That's his fifth catch of the day and a first down. So Georgia staying barely alive. Archie coming into the game had caught four passes all season. Georgia does not throw much. Their leading receiver, in fact, had caught only seven all year, and Archie today has caught five. But that's what happens when you play catch-up. First down from the 30. Johnson C nearly picked off. Jimmy Warren who's had a good second half. Second and 10. Trying to hit Tron Jackson coming out of the backfield. Jimmy Warren, who's been very busy in the secondary, particularly, as you mentioned, here in the second half to flex the football. Hey, Jimmy. Well, the last time Bo Jackson was in Athens was as a baseball player. That night he went four for four, hit three home runs, one double. Second and 10 from the 30-yard line. Johnson to Lane to the 9-yard line. And a, no one thing, Georgia is not going down with a whipper. First and goal at the 9. They still have their two timeouts left, but they have to save those for what they hope will be a next drive. They're still down by 14 points. From the 9, Archie the intended receiver and that pass thrown to stop the clock as much as anything else second down second down goal to go georgia with the ball at the nine yard line auburn coming in a two-point underdog leading 24 to 10 bo jackson's had a big day the defense has turned in some key plays and georgia forced to play catch up second down goal to go Johnson for the end zone incomplete Freddie Lane had a couple of defenders out in front of him third down Freddie Lane number four the flanker back on the right is the intended receiver as Johnson sprints out he's covered by Warren and Powell in the secondary it looks momentarily that he might be open the ball is thrown just beyond his grasp potentially it was a touchdown Third and goal now. The freshman Johnson back to throw. Incomplete. And so it's fourth down. Herman Archie was the intended receiver. And that time, the defensive line put some pressure on Johnson. So Johnson arriving late is now three of nine passing for 37 yards. Big day for the Tigers. And on fourth down now, Georgia, even though it was an incomplete pass and the clock has stopped, must take a timeout to discuss their options. 
Again, it gives us a moment to look at this SEC race, the winner, of course, to go to the Sugar Bowl. Florida is ineligible. So they may win the conference. They won today. They're 5-1 and one in the conference, but they can't go. Alabama is 4-1-1, but Tennessee with victories, and they'll be favored the next two weeks against Kentucky and against Vanderbilt. If they go 5-1, and one, they are in. Auburn would be 3-2. and two. They'd be out. Georgia 3-2-1. They'd be out. LSU would be 3-1-1. One one. But again, Tennessee is the only team now to control its own destiny on the way to New Orleans. Fortunately, they won early when Tony Robinson was healthy. And they won today over Mississippi by 20. Georgia with one timeout left and fourth down coming up. So they try to stay in the game right here. Otherwise, Auburn can obviously run the clock out. 46 seconds to play. Fourth and goal from the nine. Johnson going pitch and incomplete. Herman Archie got a hand on it, and that's all at the goal line. And that's all for Georgia. 40 seconds to go, and the Auburn Tigers will have a very happy bus ride back to Alabama. Johnson unhappy with himself because he threw that ball high and inside. Had he thrown it low and outside, it might have been catchable for Archie and a potential touchdown. Georgia can stop the clock just once if they so elect. And Auburn can run it out. Washington has gone all the way at quarterback. Puts his knee down at the seven-yard line. And the Bulldogs, at the moment anyway, not electing to use their one remaining timeout. It's all academic anyway. As the Auburn Tigers will go 8-2, and two, a team that many thought would win the national championship. They were upset early by Tennessee, beaten a couple of weeks back by Florida. Vince Dooley will watch his team lose for the first time since opening night when Alabama, in that wild ending, came from behind to beat him. Shula leading the team down the field at the very end after it looked like Georgia on a blocked punt had won the game. Since that time, they have gone 7-0-1 with the tie against Vanderbilt and a very happy Bo Jackson will join his mates on the way back to Auburn where they will prepare for their battle in a couple of weeks against Alabama. Jackson bothered by a deep thigh bruise, so he did not carry the ball as much today as he might normally have. But he did a masterful job, scored twice, caught a couple of passes, his first two receptions of the season. And after the Georgia timeout, Washington puts his knee down. And we can write a finish to this one. A very happy Pat Dye. Watch this team lead at the half by 10. Win it at the end by 14. Dooley, the dean of the conference coaches, and Dye in his fifth year. And a man who has taken... Auburn. Let's go to Jim Lampley.